Jesus. Hmm. Surely God is my salvation, and I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord Himself. Is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Let's see. Let's pull that up, Jesus. I like that. Let's do that. <clears throat> Just go to it. Isaiah. Yeah. And that was in the <laughs> happens to be a song of praise. Hallelujah. You're always funny like that, Lord. <clears throat> See, why don't we just start it from the beginning? In that day, you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Oh, you were angry with me. Your anger has turned away. You have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. I understand, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> well, let's finish it. <clears throat> In that day, you will say, your praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. 
Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. For great is God among us. Hey, Lord. Great is Great is our God. At the beginning, just I just found this. Like, I just was um clicking on here, and I was actually going to get a psalm, but uh, Isaiah twelve two popped up, so I was like, I was just gonna go past it, but it just stuck out to me. So I was like, okay, I'll sing that to you, Lord. He's like, well, one, you know, go get it. And I was like, okay, well, let me go, let me go get it. So I went to go pull it up. And when I pulled up, it says songs of praise. I was like, oh, okay, even better. But as I began singing it, he started talking to me and he said, this is, <laughs> this will be again. Cause in the beginning it says, although you were mad with me or you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Um, You know, the Lord was not pleased with america because <laughs> he was not pleased with america as a whole uh and there has been a lot of repentance a lot of repentance a lot of a lot of repentance just coming back to the lord and just surrendering um the ecclesia being you know that voice in the earth and i mean it's so fitting as i i begin singing it and he began talking to me then it becomes so fitting how this is the song of praise that we are going to sing and, and it, i'm just going to read it this time it's it's isaiah chapter 12 verse 2 um i am in my in the niv which i don't necessarily like but i'm in it because that that's what it was um when i originally pull, pulled it up and i wanted to keep that same uh verbiage so it says, in that day, you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make it known among the nations what he has done. That's totally what's going to happen. <laughs> That's absolutely what's going to happen. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Um, That is so fitting. That is so, 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 so fitting. That's, this, that's what's, that's what's going to happen. That's, this is, this is, this could have been written by somebody today. I mean, they could have written this today glorious things let the lord the lord himself is my strength and my defense and he has become my salvation no one's going to get credit for the things that god's about to unveil no one's going to get credit except him he's the only one going to get credit and i am going to do that really quick you want me to get Huh. 
Very interesting. Very. Actually, too interesting for me not to look up. <laughs> it's literally a letter. Okay, so... <laughs> like it's too okay let me just fill you in okay so first of all the strong's concordance number for salvation is three four 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 but it's it's pronounced yeshu ah and i was like that so close to yeshua right and so i'm like i said it's too close for me not to look it up so i went to go look it up and Yeshua <laughs> is, you know, for what well, we, you know, for Jesus, right? Um, it has it pronounced Yeshua. So it's Y A Y, Yeshua, A W A H instead of A W. But yeah, I'm like, wow, I just like that sounds so close. Okay. So let me go back to uh, salvation. Deeds of deliverance, deliverance, help, prosperity, salvation, to save, saving, security, victory, victories, and victory. Number one for the breakdown of salvation is welfare and prosperity. Hallelujah. Number two is deliverance. Number three is salvation. And it says salvation by God, pri primarily from external evils, but often with added spiritual idea, which of course, and then victory. Hallelujah stronghold of victories, tower of victories, a store of victories. And it even has, he will beautify the meek with victories. And the Strong's exhaustive, exhaustive concordance for salvation, it has deliverance, health, helping, salvation, save, saving health. And welfare. Something saved. Deliverance or hence aid. Victory. Prosperity. Health. A helping. And saving health and welfare. You know, it's, it says. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. The Lord alone has become my salvation. That word, when that word was used, they were literally talking about all of this. They had the knowledge to understand what these words meant when they spoke them. You know, we, we don't. We kind of, the way English kind of took and made some, made it in like an idea that was, that could touch on these. But then the way that English language is, is you had to add that other stuff in there. If you wanted it to include that, you'd have to add that in this, in that sentence. But when they said salvation, it was for all of it. <laughs> like salvation, boom, they had it immediately. Like, oh, okay, wow, it's going to be Oh, that means you're gonna have health, you're gonna have wealth, you're gonna have this, you're gonna have deliverance, you're gonna have, you're gonna be saved, you're gonna be, <laughs> you're gonna have strongholds of victories. <laughs> like you're gonna have the helmet of victory. It says Isaiah 59 and 17, the helmet of victory. Uh God's gonna beautify the meek with victory. Hallelujah. The salvation. That's what that word salvation means. Wow. Why I love the Strongs. Um, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anything else you want me to hit on this, Lord? This is amazing. Yes, I will. <laughs> Verse two. Surely, surely, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. And then it goes into saying, the Lord, the Lord himself is my strength 
and my defense. He has become my salvation. And that word defense also can mean the word song. Because, I mean, it's amazing. The way that The way that they have words is the way that God set them up is, is, is just amazing. Hmm. Hmm. Somebody continues, I think it's Trisha talking about the word vindication, though the Lord keeps saying the word vindication. Um, when you pull up the word defense, um, in the Strongs, it says it has a verbal defense, particularly in the, in law court. But then it says, you know, as, as you go down to the words, it's even saying properly a well-reasoned reply. <laughs> making a legal defense. It even says it has nothing to do with saying I'm sorry, but rather a reasoned argument, a defense that presented the evidence supplying compelling proof. And it even, and it comes down in the exhaustive concordance as vindication and defense. <laughs> I just love that. But literally he will be my vindication. He will be, I won't have to even say anything because when he does it, he's going to do it all. I'm not, I don't have to apologize for doing what God told me to do. I don't have to say, you know, well, I'm sorry that, you know, you think that I'm a nut job. Look, I'm literally doing what God's telling me to do. I am, I, if anybody thinks I'm crazy, guess what? I'm sitting in the same seat next to Abraham who left everything that he knew to go into the wilderness when he had a home, he had these false gods and everything. He had his whole family and everything, but he leaves it all to be obedient. And then what does God promise him? Everything <laughs> in return for his obedience. I'm sure, I'm very sure he was called every name that you could think of. And they probably just thought he was a crazy person. Like, well, he's gone mentally. He he's off his rocker right but in reality he was doing what he was told to do and god's like i will be your defense because when it came down to it nobody could turn around and say when god came through nobody could turn around and say well he well that's maybe something happened here no everyone knew same thing with sarah she was like, I'll just give you Hagar and do that. We'll have a child. God was like, nah, girl, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. And I don't need your help. What I need is your obedience. So then God even, I mean, <laughs> you get the angel of the Lord showing up and renewing the promise with two other angels and, and, and sister just going to laugh. Like, nah, nah, <laughs> Y'all want, um, you know, sugar with this tea? You know, the Lord's like, what's she laughing about? She's like, oh, I didn't laugh. Girl, we heard you laughing in the spirit. How we, ain't nobody else in here with you. How else we going to ask you how you laugh? <laughs> how are you laughing? Well, she was scared and probably embarrassed. She wanted to go through the whole thing and say, well, you know, uh, <laughs> I didn't laugh. And the Lord's like, sure, but yes, you did. But you did laugh. God's like, I won't be mocked. I might not move in your timing and you might think that I've done lost my mind, but trust me, when I finally do move in the perfect timing, when it happens, everybody's mouth just going to fall off and no one can say nothing. She's the one of the things that she specifically said to Abraham was, um, uh, let's just get the basics in order. Uh, I don't, I don't have a cycle. I'm there's, I'm not menstruating. It literally says that the ways of women have gone. She was like, I don't pack day bag, day up out of here. I don't anymore, but see none of that matter. 
the miraculous birth that she had all number one god god just foreshadowed the miraculous birth of his son yes there was abraham there but he just showed that i don't need you the way you think i need you I'll do it the way I want to do it. And then I'm going to get praise for it because no one can do this. And it was miraculous. And it was literally everything. To the point, you know, God in his goodness, because back then he could have just said, no, kill Hagar and that child. <laughs> no, I said no. And it wouldn't have been Hagar's fault. But that, you know, Hagar and her son Ishmael has been, been a thorn in their side ever since. A constant reminder of obedience is better than sacrifice. Nobody told you to sacrifice your marriage to get an answer. Everybody just wants to run and be like, that'll move God and that'll move his hand and he'll just see my obedience. And then he'll feel the need to, he'll feel the need to do what he was going to do to begin with. And then you just going to have to be sitting there looking all like, because you done made a mistake to the point. She was like, get this girl about my house and take your baby with you. Cause I just done had enough of y'all. But whose fault was it? Whose fault was it? You done gave this girl to him like a concubine. She'll just be here like a, like a wife to you, just like me. And then through her, I don't have children. If you would have just listened, your life would have been so much easier. But because of your disobedience, you, you created a, a, a foe, an enemy that you had to contend with forever until you go on home. But that, but that didn't stop your generations. They still contending today. But God in his mercy, in his mercy, I hear you, Papa. You know, the Lord said even he made a choice. He made a choice. The choice was, I'll still bless your seed, Abraham, because it's from you. But he was like, but I'm going to tell you right now, bro, man, going to be wild. He's going to be out of control. He's going to be a man of, of, of violence and war. <laughs> but he said his eye, I just hear, I just see the Lord. His eye, when that baby was conceived in that moment, his eyes were able to see straight on through. I just see like a portal going straight through so fast that I can't see anything but a zooming looking like a portal going through of all the, the generations well on past. I'm talking about all the way where we are and past us who are going to come unto the Lord. They are already receiving so many visions and encounters of Jesus Christ. He saw them. When God does stuff, you know, sometimes we be just because we do stuff hastily and be all in a rush, we be thinking that's how God's doing. Oh, but God, but you forgot because I had this and I had, he was like, I see it from, from beginning to end. I see it from beginning to end. I already saw all of it. And when he, when Ishmael was conceived, he already saw to the end of those, the, that generation, that the generation that would come to know him, the generation who would come to know him and say, Jesus is Lord, that there be a remnant saved. That is how good God is. And no, they was being slaughtered and all the stuff they had going on. But whose fault was that? That's your fault. Well, they just want to do this. They just want to do that. that. Is still your fault. It's not God's fault, but still in his goodness, he still protected you. But you had to go through things that you didn't want to go through because you thought I'll just sacrifice this and that. And then this is that. Look, let me just, let me just say, that's like when people do this. That's exactly like when people do this. I'm going to go on a fast because 
I want God to do this and that. So I'm going to go on this fast and that's going to move his hand. No, absolutely it's not. What's going to do is lay that flesh down because that's what the fast was for. Is to get you closer to God, not to throw a fit. That's like if your child was like, well, I'm not going to eat anything until you do this, but I'll just go study. At the end of it, well, what did you learn? Well, I learned all this information. That's great. Doesn't mean I'm going to do what you asked me to do. Unless I called you to do that, you're just doing that as a fit. You think you're going to force me and move my hand? That's not what you do. If we, if I'm going to go on a fast, it's going to be, God, I'm going on a fast because I want to get all these distractions out the way. I want to be in alignment with you to hear what you have to say to me. Now I'm about to force your hand, make you do this and snap. Watch me not eat something. Watch me just suffer and go through all the things I'm suffering. Even if I'm like, oh, I just enjoy this time, Lord. Well, he's like, I enjoy this time too. And but people be like, oh, well, how come this and that didn't happen? Because you don't fast for that reason. That's just manipulation. You just trying to force his hand and make him do something. Well, really, he was like, right, twist, twist God's arm. You, you, yes, he has to go. He has to move because I fasted for two weeks. I fasted for a whole month. I da da da. But did your relationship with the Lord grow at all? Well. I mean, I learned all this scripture. Great. Well, what was the Lord saying to you in that time? I'm not sure. Then your flesh didn't die because you made it all about you. Fasting is to make it about him. That was all fasting was about. To make it about him. To get yourself back in alignment with him. But people think, oh, I heard all these teachings on this and that. Well, you can hear all the teachings that you want, but that don't make it true. Because if you just go through the Bible, they're not fasting to force God's hand to do nothing. Specifically, God gets to talking about fasting. He's like, and if you're going to fast, don't be out there, you know, with your face looking all this and that. He said, you know, clean yourself up <laughs> and don't be telling everybody about it. Because it's literally about your relationship with him. Marjorie said, kind of like when we took the ark, when they when the when they took the ark to battle to force God to win for them. Exactly. And they lost. And then they lost the ark too. Which <laughs> exactly. Because you cannot force God. You can't try to take his word and be like, I'm gonna make it work against you. And uh, you better learn to move in his time and then sit your butt down, or you're gonna be out there chopped up in a million in a million pieces talking about why God leave me like this you are disobedient and that's why you out here toe up well, I'll just suffer this and go through this and snap but God will just he'll just have to vindicate me when in reality he never called you to go out there to begin with he never said for you to say nothing I'll just go and tell these people this and snap and then if you know they hurt my feelings then God will just have to this and snap looky here you better learn to speak when he tell you to speak and hold your peace until he tell you not to. There's so many things. That's You know what? This is why even in the Bible, it just, just you know, where Jesus talked about, just let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't be, just, just let it be simple. I understand liking to talk, okay? I understand that. But there's just not, sometimes you just need to not say nothing. Just be quiet. You don't need to educate everybody in the whole entire world. That's another thing. You don't need to do that. Well, it says to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. and that, uh, Yes, it does. But it also talks to you about you need to take the full counsel. You got to take the full counsel of God. It also says don't be throwing your pearls out here to pick that don't. They're just going to trample on it. They don't understand it. And nor do they want it. Well, I'm going to force this person to get saved. No, you're not. You're not even in charge of when people get saved. Do you not see that the Lord's specifically talking about he is the one, Holy Spirit's the one that draws people to him? So if Holy Spirit's not drawing that person, you're going to be up there going, and they're going to be like, get out my 
face. I don't want to hear what you have to say. And I want you to shut up. If we could just be honest, I want you to get away from me. Well, son, Lord, I did it for you. <laughs> and he's like, you didn't have to. You, I never told you to go do that though. I just didn't even tell you to do that. God's going to vindicate me and he's going to bring this to light. Well, it has time and he will, but it don't even matter. It don't even mean you're going to have anything to do with it. What you need to do is call stay in your own lane. That's for all of us. She said, well, God, that's for everybody. We just stay in your own lane. People going into malls and restaurants saying, taking over the whole everything. Yes. Listen. If you going to go into, if I walked into IHOP and decided I was going to um, just start uh, a praise and worship inside of IHOP, let me tell you something. I know I, that is so full of witchcraft. I'm done. I think I'm going a, I'm to a make everybody get into uh, praise and worship. Oh, I'm just going to start praise and worshiping and, and I'm going to, you know, I mean, whatever, or go into a store like, um, I don't know what's something small, like she said, mall, like Claire, something small and just be in here, you know, and I'm going to be hallelujah. Jesus is king. Everyone in there is either going to be like, shut the heck up. And I absolutely hate these Christians. You just become a stench. And they're like, they're, they're the rudest people. And they'd be thinking, oh yeah, we just, we just made everybody hear the praise word. They, is it not the goodness of God that turns people's hearts? You done, you done held them hostage. You did exactly the thing that you don't like. If someone jumped in, I'm just going to thank you, Holy Spirit. If you were at IHOP, okay. And some, and a group of people who were uh like transgender decided to just start, you know, making a whole ruckus about being transgender and how it, that's how it's supposed to be and then turn it into a song and start worshiping Satan, that would just be beyond repulsive. You'd want to get up and leave. Excuse me. First of all, we paid to come here to have a good time. Then you're in here doing this. I've been in a restaurant before where people got drunk. It was a TGI Fridays. People got drunk at the bar and they started and they had an open mic for whatever, for whatever reason. And they're literally singing on this open, on the microphone. And me and Josh were like, are they serious? And we got the, the servers over. Like, can, is there nothing that you can do? There's too many of them. I don't care. <laughs> we didn't come here for that. They're over here cussing and just carrying on. Shut that up. I'm like, call the police then. I mean, seriously, get somebody to make that stop. It is no different if it was a Christian person. Because I'll tell you what, I have no problem with praising the Lord. I love the Lord. I praise him all the time. But if someone just came into the IHOP and started just thinking they're going to be praise and worship all loud and obnoxious, that person needs to leave or group or whatever. They need to leave. Excuse me. No, that's just witchcraft because now I'm just trying to force you and everybody else to just partake in whatever I feel like doing. When even the Lord doesn't force himself upon people, we know that. The Lord doesn't force himself upon people, but yet people do that and it's wrong. It's wrong, but it's also just evil and it, and it just makes God look like a piece of trash to every person. They just feel like, I don't want anything to do with that. It is selfish. It's selfish. You didn't think about nobody else but yourself and what you wanted to do. And that's wrong. But I love that the Lord segued this to this scripture here. Let me go. Actually, let me, let me roll up here really quick and see if I missed anything. His ways are not our ways. Amen. His ways are not our ways. Thankfully, that's what it means. <laughs> Taylor said the other men be like, why can't you be like Sarah and let me have another woman? Right, go sit show. <laughs> but damn, that's affecting us today. Amen. 
Okay, let me let me get this verse here. The verse is John 15, verse 4 through 5. And it says, and Jesus is speaking, and he says, Remain in me. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without re remaining in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. Verse 5 is, I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. The Lord wanted me to give this verse because for some reason, when, when, for some reason, people get into this mentality of thinking that, well, you know, I should just be, I, I, I should either be further along, I should be doing something more, or, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm trying to just do all this stuff on my own, you know, or, or if I, every time I do something, I just mess it up. I just, you know, I, I want to be like everyone else and want to not mess it up. Excuse me. <laughs> everyone else who ain't messing it up is because they know that they need, that you can't do any, because apart from God, you can do nothing. Like, oh, you just, just let that go. Being worried, I'm going to mess it up. Let that go. Just let it all fly away. Bye-bye. Because the truth is, you will mess it up. If it's just you and you're in your flesh and you didn't listen to what God's telling you to do, you will mess. Just, just put it down as you will. Put it, get a check mark, mark it and say complete. If I do it without God, it'll be jacked up seven ways to Sunday, period. But if I wait upon him, I, I remain in him. See, he didn't say that you were never there. He said, if you remain in me and I will remain, will, will remain in you. Remain here. Otherwise, you will mess it up. It's so important to understand. So important to understand that you must let go of the thought and idea that you are going to do something, you know, on your own. Like, I'm just going to do it and it's going to go out. It's going to happen well. No, 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 no. No, that's not how that works. I just had a plan that if I went over there and I said this to that person, that this is how it's going to work. But no, it doesn't work like that. You need to not do that. <laughs> you need to really just be moved by the Holy Spirit. And remain in the Lord and let him tell you what you're going to do, where you're going to go, what you're going to do, all of those things, all of it. Because it goes on to verse six, if anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withers and dies. And they gather such branches and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my, and, and if you remain in me, and my words remain in you. That is if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. Do you, I just, just, do you see that? Not just, I'm a Christian. You hear that all the time. I'm a Christian. So therefore there shouldn't be any legal right for the enemy. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> I'm a Christian, so therefore, da 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 da. No, mm -mm, no. A lot of people call themselves Christians, but they don't remain in Him, and His words certainly aren't in them. But I seem like I've been praying the same prayer for the last twenty years. But have you done anything different? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. That's from the water boy. <laughs> I don't endorse the mama boy, or water boy, but the part where he's like, mama's wrong again, literally. <laughs> That's what mom said. That's funny. But yes, <laughs> exactly. What did you done? Didn't, why, why are you doing the same thing again and again and again, expecting a different result? I've been praying. I, I've been praying since such and such and such. But nothing has happened. Nothing has changed. Nothing, nothing in your life. Nothing. You're just a pew warmer. 
literally a definition of insanity. You're just a pew warmer is all you are. You are a poster board. You could literally not come and we just put your poster of you here and it'd be like you was here because you retained zero. The people who retain zero, you know. They're the ones getting frustrated, upset, and, and just be like, you know, this is dumb. No, it isn't. <laughs> well, everybody else seems to be doing, you know, doing so well, but every time I do it, it's like nothing ever happened. But, you know, well, did you try this? And then they're shut off. You can't, you can't even put anything in them because they're shut off. And then, um, and, and then the most important thing you need to understand is when people shut off, it is not your job to run down and get them. That's like, you be like, no, Jesus, you stay back. I'm gonna go get them. Um, and then what you gonna do when you get there? <laughs> well, you gotta come back. Don't you understand? You know, no, get your move out the way. You're not Jesus. You might think you're a savior, but you're not. So you just take stage left and let, yes, that savior complex, thinking that you're just going to go do it all. I'll do it and I'll do, you'll do nothing apart from the Lord because you, what you produce will be trash. It'll just be garbage and you will fail and you will mess it up. It's not your job. It's not your job. You not your job to save. You're not, you're not the savior. You don't, you're not. You're not, no matter how much you love your family, your friends, or whatever, you're not the savior. You're not. You have to just be like, Lord, you do this. Lord, you you take care of this. You help that person. You turn my spouse's eyes around to you, Lord. You speak to their heart. You do this, that, and the other, whatever it is that needs to be done. Not you do it yourself. Church, so we got to get our eyes off ourselves and our minds off of our own opinions. Yes, we don't have to say anymore, right? We are crucified and surrendering Christ, his will, his way. Exactly. And it's hit. And it, there you go, Taylor. And it's his loving kindness that draws us near to him. Yes. Let the Lord do what he's going to do. The problem, like, like, I've been praying for this person for a hundred million trillion years, but you also won't let God do anything. So what are you praying? God, it's like saying, Jesus, you go after them. And as soon as it goes, like, no, I'm going to do it and go run it. Well, then you're just a double-minded person. And what does the Bible say about a double-minded person? They will receive some things. No, they'll receive nothing from God. So that's why they're praying forever. And it don't work. Oh, it's not working. Because you're just a double-minded person. You will receive nothing from God. That's why. That is why unstable in all their ways literally that's scripture exactly we have to take care that we're not double-minded we're not unstable in all our ways that we're not just trying to get off getting off and doing our own thing and thinking we're just gonna do stuff on our own and like everybody else there is no like everybody else first of all who cares what everybody else is doing your job is to remain in him and him and you. And his words, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, it has to live there. You know, so many times when I've been teaching the fire taught from the beginning up until now, you know, it's literally just scripture. <laughs> it's literally just, I'm just giving, it's just, it's scripture. So I'm giving you scripture. But when people want to put it away, they're like, well, I've already done that. And I want to put that on the shelf. You cannot though. <laughs> it needs to live in you. Not making a burial ground for it and putting it in a tomb. Well, that's done. And now I'm just going to cover it up and bury it so I can move on to the next thing. No. It now should be a part of your life. It should live in your heart. He says, my message lives in your heart. Jesus didn't just only preach that he was going to die and resurrect. He preached a whole lot more than that. <laughs> he preached about the, the, he preached about, about occupying. He preached about 
you know, having which particular like taking the mountain. So you're occupying you doing something with what he gave you. He preached about the commandments, the greatest one of all. He preached about the crucified life and he lived it. But no one wants to live the crucified life. That's boring. We've already done that. That was one Sunday when we took, we, we read a thing on it one Sunday and that should be done. That's not how it works. That's why there's so, there's so much lack in the church. Cause I can talk to you all day, all day about, about uh revival, but you know what revival means? Do you know what revival means? In order for something to revive, it had to have been dead. So unless you're dead here, which you shouldn't be, you don't need to be revived. You need to trek on. It's so important. Does the world need revival? Yes, honestly, the body of Christ needs revival because a lot of the church is dead. They lack power. They don't know who God is. They don't know who Jesus is. They don't know that Jesus saves today. They don't know much of anything. The word is not in them. And so therefore they have fallen away and they're asleep and they're in slumber. And what's dangerous is when everybody's like, I want to be like that because everyone is talking about revival. The revival's not for you. You shouldn't be dead. The harvest is for you. You should be the one preaching the revival and then bringing in the harvest. You are the helping hands. You are the workers. You are the ones in the field. You're the ones who were prayed about. Where the Lord says to pray for, for more, ask and pray for more workers. Because guess what? There is a great harvest coming in. The laborers, yes, there's, there's a great harvest coming in. But you shouldn't be one being harvested. You should be the harvester. Don't get it twisted with fancy words. Recognize and understand and know who you are so that you can be operable when the time comes. Instead of trying to be like everybody else. You know how foolish this is? Look, look at, listen to this. If we were in a, at, a, at, a, at a beach and you're supposed to be the lifeguard or the teacher and they have other lifeguards and teachers there, but the ones who get the most attention are the ones who can't swim. And so since you need so much attention, even though you know how to swim, you go out there and start drowning. Ain't that foolish? I need help too. I want to be saved and helped like everybody else. Ah, that's insane. Why are you trying to do that? Your job is to save others. Well, but they're getting all the attention. They, they need it. Or they'll be dead. You know, this was the issue with the older brother and the younger brother and the prodigal son. The older brother at any time could have thrown a party. Isn't that what his father told him? But he was like, well, you didn't throw me a party. <laughs> well, you did all that for him. And I've been here all this time. He was like, if at any time you, you could have thrown a party for you at any time, bro, what you mad about? Well, because you ran over there to him. But I've been here with you this whole time. Well, I didn't think about it like that. Well, yeah, you sure didn't. Quit trying to be the one who's out in the world and needing help and needing God to run to me. Oh, I need you to run to me. I need you. Listen here. There's a time coming upon this earth where it's not just a move of the spirit of God. It's going to be a holy habitation. A, ha he's hab a habitation, not a move. Not a move where he just passed by like a little rub. Oh, that was so nice. No, it's like lay on me. And stay. That's where he's trying to be. But everybody wants to be the little, uh -huh, yay. We need to come out the baby stuff and be like, look, we was holding a fort down this whole time. What do you think a good and faithful servant is? It's not the one running back and be like, come and catch me, God. I'm out here. <laughs> If you don't get your knothead itself in this house and do the thing I done told you to do, and then they'd be like, well, why isn't God blessing me? Because you're disobedient, friend. Because you're disobedient and you're double-minded because all you keep doing is this part gets boring, so I want to go out there like your daggone Little Mermaid, Ariel. You set your butt here and be happy with the thing you got. You got it? 
I quit trying to go out there all the time. I want to be where the people are. She should have got spanked. Because listen here, what you got going on is straight up rebellion. And that's how it happens in the church. It might not be as blatant as you went to witchcraft, you know, where you're literally doing some kind of sorcery. But when you don't listen to what God has called you to do, and then you're like, well, you know, I'm flip-flopping because I'm going over here and I'm going over there and I don't know, I'm not really producing the fruit I want, but I, I know I want to have this luck. Quit looking at everything else and stop being unstable and learn to just be planted. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you are like a reed blowing in the wind on every little doctrine that happens, oh, wow, they're doing this over there. Whoop, they're over there doing that. And if, you, if that's you, guess what's going to happen? When the Lord comes and comes to, to habitate with you, you're going to get this. But why didn't, why didn't I get what everybody else? How can it pass me by? Because you were ready. You have, this is why the Lord said he's going to get the his own house in order first. That's us. So if we don't get ourselves in order and we're still trying to go back and forth, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I saw this and I saw that. And well, this resonated with me and that resonated with me. And that was this and that, but this was over here doing this. And well, I saw him and that person only back there. I really like how they say, so I want to sing. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do that or that. A one man band, you're not what you need to be is stable. Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you like me to do? If the Lord tells you, <laughs> y'all are cracking me up. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yes, I did. I used to watch The Little Mermaid often when I was little. And I used to sing the song and I used to be doing the pose like I was on the rock, you know. But anyway, <laughs> but what we need to do is get our own house in order. You know, God does not dwell in the tents anymore because we are the temple. We have to get our own self in order. Trust me, you want to get yourself in order and not have God get you in order. Because the last thing you want him to say is to you is, why are you out here doing this and that? I called you here. I told you to do this. I gave you all. <laughs> I'm about to turn the comments away from me. <laughs> I told you to do this and this. But for some reason, you're still out here doing everything else. So I can't put in you what I should have been able to put in you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit just said, if you think about it like this, if you are in, in a clay or an art class and you had, and you're working with clay and, and there's a whole class, it's a class and everybody's working with the clay and they're making a pot, but all, but you see that person's pot. So then you look at yours and you just, you know, mold that, put, make it back into a lump and try to make it like they did. But then you get it and it looks pretty good, but then you see that person. Then you stop and try to make it in that one. Then you just keep doing that and you're just constantly fiddly faddly with it and by, and everybody else has got theirs glazing in the kiln. Yours is still sitting on the slab and now it's just an unworked mess. And then when things come out the kiln, you're like, wait, I, I'm not ready. I, I'm not ready. They're glazing them and getting them ready to make them usable. And you still fiddling with clay that's so soft because it hasn't gone through the fire that you can't do nothing with that. Well, can't you put something in mine? No, we can't put anything in that. Well, why not? Well, it's, this is just raw clay. It hasn't been fired in the kiln. There's not anything we can do with it. And then after that, it has to go through another process. Just because you went to the fire, that wasn't it. It has to be glazed and everything else. We got to waterproof it. We got to do all this other stuff to it. 
and make it usable and ready to even be used. If it's a cup, we're not just going to drink straight from this. We're going to we're going to glaze it and give it give it the seal so that it it, it keeps it waterproof. So everything in the in the clay isn't getting into your drink. There's still processes to be had. But if you're still here trying to mold the clay when everybody else, they're done. They're basically painting theirs. They got it glazed. And now they're having a tea party and you can't join because you just sat there all day trying to rework it and make it into what everybody else, you see everybody else doing. Listen, everybody has a calling, okay? Everybody's got a calling. God's calling people in, in places and whatever, but he's been doing that for a while. The reason he called you here is because there needs to be people to teach people how to do this. It can't just be, well, here's Kristen. No. <laughs> uh-uh. It's y'all. There's going to come a time where the people in the body of Christ are going to wake up and realize we've been so defeated for so long because of all the things that's in us. Well, who could who could teach us? Who who could teach us? Obviously, not the big church, because that's what everybody looks at. Their eyes get all like, "Oh my gosh, that big church!" And everybody in the church is literally like, in their spirit. But the praise and worship was like, so what? If the praise and worship was really in your soul, you would be listening hardcore to the to the word of God. But everybody in there just basically can't wait to get out. Or it, it was just, it was so good that it was like, it just made me feel like I was on fire. But then they go home and do nothing with it. It goes nowhere because even that was fleshy. And then they go home and they're still defeated and have a whole bucket load of stuff wrong. We have to be ready. We have to take it. Like when they say, you know, grabbing the horns of the bull, you, you have to, you got to know it because what's going to happen, you know, when you encounter that this particular person who is just like, I have 7 trillion questions and I need this and I need that. And I'm here needy and I, and I, and all this stuff, you got to be armed and ready. You got to be armed and ready. You know, not to throw Taylor out here, but she just met with a person who's uh, who's demon possessed. But she wants to get her soul healed. Well, there you go. Not like the Lord was like, here's an easy assignment. <laughs> no. You got to be ready. You got to be ready for who God puts in your in your path, in your way. Not who you want to get. That's the problem is that your eyes are on what you want. You guys got to be on what he wants. Who he's telling you to get. You'd be like, but my 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 family is right here. You know, my so-and-so is right here. He's like, I, I'll get them. But I, they're in arm reach. I could literally just reach over and grab them. He's like, I got it. Uh, Okay. <laughs> You go get that person over there. Way out there, Lord. Yeah, way out there. You were trained to swim. Go all the way out there. I'm sorry, everyone unsaved definitely is under demonic influence and some creative. But she's actually possessed. She has some with inside her. And this is because a lot of stuff that she's gone through. And yes, you know, it, there's a lot of Christians in the church who are demon possessed. They don't realize that they are. That's why I try to say the devil does not care that people go to church. He really does not care. He doesn't care that you praise and worship. He doesn't care any of that, especially when it's dead. When it's really all about your flesh. He doesn't care because that actually gives him more fuel. You, you're just caring about yourself. It's all about, you know, your, 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 oh, I had all these tears and it was just beautiful. Instead of you being broken and being honest before the Lord, there's, there's, this is this, this whole movement of, of Christians, uh, you know, having all these demons exercise out of that. This that's that's been a wake up call to people. It's been a wake up call.
because people just used to think, well, I'm a Christian, so therefore I cannot be demon possessed. Well, if you don't remain in, in the Lord, then he's not remaining in you. And the problem is, if he's not in there, something else going to be. And so, so yes, I, let's see, uh, mom said he sits on the front pew. He sure does. The devil sits on the front pew. He doesn't care, especially in churches that are dead. Now, if it's a church filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is able to just move and, 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 you know, the people live and breathe and have their being in God in that church, then the devil is not coming in there. He's not coming in there. But you know the ones, it's just where there's strife in the church, there's all kinds of stuff going on because people just don't want to get right. And there's so much, there's gossip and all, they're clicky and all this. And the love of God isn't there, I'll tell you that right now. And, G, and God is love. So that's just, I can just tell you right there. And that's not to like say anything mean. It's just, it's just the, just the truth of what it is. Okay. Without trying to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the patty cake person. So it's just, that's just what it is without being mean. I'm not trying to be not like saying someone's name or their, their church name or, or, you know, any, any church's name, but you know, when you get to one of those and you know, when it, when, when you get in there, you can feel it. They just looking at you like, hmm. You either, you're either, they looking at you like, who is that? Or they just look through you because they honestly don't care because they're so large. That's why home churches and small gatherings have become the thing, you know, and it's because that's where God can move, you know. Um, and that was prophesied about back in 20, I think 2018, that they said that, 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 I think it was 20, no, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because my, my dad was still, uh, was still here and, and we had a home church. So they were talking about, you know, home, the Lord said the home churches are going to, they're going to come back to where, you know, the people are going to be meeting in homes and et cetera, because that's where God's going to want to move. And now you hear them talking about, it. and I think they talked about it a lot more in, during 2020. And then, you know, it's being talked about again now because that's where, you know, that's where God, God is moving because the hearts are being made right. And there's union and fellowship, true fellowship. Um, Mom says, gets the leadership to fight with each other. Yes, it's so dangerous, the flock fighting and jealousy is in the midst. That's how ministers fall into power tripping and lustful affairs. Yes, because I mean, what is the Bible talks about? That every every type of sin you can think of, you know, sometimes is happening behind you know the church doors. And God's coming to reveal all that. He's coming to just expose it and take things down um, because enough's enough. Um, it hurts so many people in the church. It makes them feel unwanted there. Yes when they see you as money and not and a number and not a beautiful child of God whose soul needs healing. Yes. When you're just being looked at like a number, because there's so many, I'm not saying that churches and even churches that love the Lord that are very large, sometimes sadly, they still are disjointed because it's like, it's so large that people just kind of get left out or don't feel like they're at, they're not close enough to, let's say the pastor knows about 50 people in the church, but let's say the church has 200 members. So it's like, yeah, he might know 50 and they can go to his, you know, house or be invited to wherever or her house and be invited to wherever, but everybody else kind of just falls to the side. They're, or we're not, we either don't live in this, this area, we don't, whatever. You know, it's sad because people go away so hurt. And there's a lot of people who are hurt by the church and they might still attend the church, but they're still hurt by the church. And, be, and those hurts keep them from knowing God as father or as friend, as a leader, there's a lot of a lot of reasons why people get hurt and have soul wounds and so many things. But you guys have been taught to deal with soul wounds. You've been taught how to pray for people properly. 
and not be like, since you have this problem, then you need to, <laughs> but it's, we're going to pray together and we're going to repent of this and we're going to da, 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 da. You've learned how to, in just being taught, you have learned how to then talk to other people, how to minister, you know, uh, truth and real truth, not, you know, the sort of truth, because I don't want to hurt your feelings, truth, but real truth. And that's, it's so good. And it's been like life lessons. And that's honestly the best way to learn because you remember that versus if I just gave you a textbook kind of deal. But it's so good because God is, I know he's already began using a lot of you. And that's, fa that's fabulous. It's fantastic. Uh, you know, we're just going up from here. You know, when the Lord opens the door to more people, however he does it, um, you will all be ready. You will all be ready. And I, you're already ready, but I know that you will all be ready for the charge and not be judgy, you know, and be judgmental. This is one of the reasons why I went to the mentorship to show the stuff that we all were acquainted with because we can see how we're not so far different. And that the enemy, if he's going to be lying to one, he's going to be lying to everybody because that's what he does. So no matter what their background is, we can still stand side by side with them and, and, and without judgment and just pray and help them to get their soul healed because they need to be free as well. Karen said, I read an article recently about Trump's new followers being like us. Oh, I bet. Uh, mom said, unfortunately, I hop through he, though he had, or though, I'm sorry, though he could have had multiple women using scripture to deceive the flock into affairs. Yes, I, I heard about uh, that gentleman and, you know, sad, but that, that was going on for years, more than, well, I think I said more than, it was more than a decade, might have even been two. And that's what I'm talking about. Don't get all into, you know, one of the reasons why also that we need to be sure that we're not so interested in that, that having that savior complex is because then we get into, into that pride and then now we're the savior. It's so easy to just fall over into that. That's why we just have to just learn to just literally crucify ourselves and to just fall empty before the Lord. I can't do it without you. I can't, I, you know, I, I don't want to do this or do that or say or whatever. And then also not be so overly friendly that you become like freaky where they're just like, don't want anything to do with you because you're not, you just come off as fake. We just have to be real. People have had fake. Whenever it's like, wow, it's so great to meet you. Wow. Hi. Shake your hand. Wonderful. What did you think it was? Great. No one wants that. They don't want that. They don't want the whole, I'm just appearing like everything's great in my life while you're in shambles, but please come right in. Like, no, really? <laughs> no, I'm good. I guess I'll just sit in the back with the rest of the low lives since the people in the front got it all together. What they really need is somebody to be like, hi, how are you? You know, okay, yes, I'm so-and-so. You know, why don't you come sit with us or- here, why don't you come into our, uh, you know, why don't you join us? You know, I, I realize that I've been, you know, listening to the things you've been going on because you know what? We're not sales pitchy. We're not here to pitch anybody, you know, anything. You be the ears and the heart. You let Holy Spirit lead you. You're there for that person. You, you know, you gain that, you know, the, the rapport with that person. And eventually you're like, Hey, um, I was wondering, you know, if you wanted to join us on such and such nights, you know, as long as the Lord's telling you, you know, when he will tell you, you know, if you want to join us, cause we're doing this and that, you know, it's the like-minded people we've got, we've all gone through struggles. We've all da, 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 because guess what? We're not, no one should come off as, you know, well, I've learned that this and I've been this and I learned that. And actually I am, no, you're actually full of pride and you need to go sit down. <laughs> If we learn to talk to people, 
and not about how I learned this and I'm this and I'm that. And I, because that just puts a gap and more and more and more and more until there's a gorge between you and that person. But if we learn to, how to talk to people, we learn how to administer love, then they will come because they will come and you will start to have those wheels turning. God's start waking you up and being like, I want you to say this to that person. You know, that this that same person is going to come to you, and but you're going to say this because I, I got, this is what I want you to say. This is what I want you to da, 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 da. Or he'll lead you down some path where you learn about incest out of some weird way. Like, oh, I'm just gone here and, you know, scrolling through here. But this video kind of caught my eye and I was listening to the person. It's just like, I just had to listen to him. And as I listened to this person, they got talking about incest and this is not, they went through and, da, 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 da. and then, then I started to search and these scriptures and I got this net. And it's like, you had some weird little lesson that was strange. They was like, huh? And he's like, well, I just learned something today. And then that person comes out and was like, well, you know, I, you know, incest was, you know, in my family when I was younger and I had this and that. And instantly you're like, I was equipped even without me knowing. Yes, I know all, you know, like, yes, I became acquainted with that just yesterday. You know, the Lord just taught me something because I'm me being obedient, right? Because that's the whole thing. Like, oh, if I'm being obedient and I'm allowing the Lord to teach me things and I just go with what he's telling me, then he's equipping me. That's how easy it is to become equipped. So many times the Lord is just like, oh, I wanted to just show you this. I'm like, oh, okay. Wow, that's great, Lord. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, that's cool. I like that. Thank you for showing me that. It's really cool. And then the next day, something happens or whatever, and they're talking about literally the thing I just was learning about. Like, hey, they actually just, I've never even heard of this before. And now they're talking about that. Well, wow, well, Lord. You know, and then, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go read my Bible. And then oh, there's that word again. I'm like, let me just look this up. What are you saying, Lord? What are you saying? And then it'd be the answer that to that I needed for someone else. Yes, honey. The answer that I needed to to you to to give to somebody. I just, you know, got all that teaching out of nowhere, it seemed. But it's not out of nowhere. God wastes nothing. He's intentionally throwing things in your in your path and you're picking them up. You're learning them, and then you're able to give them out. But if you stay rigid, I only need to do this at this time. I read my Bible at that time. I do this at that time. I do this at that time. I have to read such and such and such from this to that and that. You will miss so much. You got to be flexible with the Lord because it's not your, it's not, we say it, not, not my will, but his will be done. But in reality, you're like, not, nah, not. Nah anyone else's will, but mine will be done because I have to have it this way. I have to wake up and have this and have my scripture and have my dad and my do this and blah. Otherwise my whole day is wrecked. If that's true, then you got a lot of stretching to do. If you, especially if, if that's true to you and then that seems to be thrown out of whack and it's like going on two weeks and you just can't get that schedule back. God's showing you something. He's over there shaking the bag. Darla wouldn't stop shaking the bag, literally shaking the bag because he's like, you need to come out of this because if I don't get you to come out of it, then you're not moving by my whims and what I want. You're moving by your whims and what you want, your schedule and your plan. You the one, you know, and you're like, oh, why are you doing this to me, Lord? Well, because you're praying, Lord, your will be done and not my, not your will. So I'm trying to get you into alignment. Hallelujah. I'm just going to read these really quick, these um comments. Without saying too much about the person who reached out to me, they were afraid to tell the truth about what they were dealing with because they thought they were going to scare me off. Instead, I was able to comfort her with God's love. Exactly. Uh, Trisha said, my entire mentality and outlook is different now because before when I, uh, when I'd be told the Lord could use me, I got all puffed up on the inside. Like, yep, I'm so great that the Lord will use me. <laughs> now, when I hear that I'm ready for the Lord to use me, I'm completely humble and I tear up. Just now when you said we are ready, the song, I need you every hour. I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Because we're nothing without him. That's right. We need him now more than ever. Not by my might or power, but by the Lord's. Hallelujah. I've been hearing the song, pour, pour my love on you like perfume. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I said, darling. Huh. 
that's who my bulldog is named after because she I guess she be like that. That's Trisha. Yeah, Dyla. But yes, yes. So forget the schedule. Forget the all of those things. I know that's hard. That's not easy. I get that. Forget the schedule. We just got to do what God's telling us to do. Could you imagine? Yes, the routines can become idols. Absolutely. Could you imagine uh, when the angel told Joseph, get up and go now? He was like, wait a minute. No, we, we normally have our morning coffee first. And then I go and kneel over here by such and such. And I, bro, if you don't get up right now and do what I just told you to do. <laughs> well, actually, we typically do this. And we, <laughs> I don't care what you do. You're going to do the thing I just told you you're going to do. <laughs> well, that's why they were so mad about Jesus healing on the Sabbath. <laughs> you did this. <laughs> He's like, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> Can not the Lord of the Sabbath do? He's like, you know, one of the lines from the G that that uh G the Jesus movie from Sight and Sound Theater when they're like, oh, you know, blasphemy, use healing on the Sabbath. And Jesus, the character, he's like, you know, don't you untie your donkey from his stall so we can get <laughs> they can get water, food and water on the Sabbath? And they're like, <laughs> don't say anything yet Shh. and he was like you know he was like in the same way this child was being held by satan so you know i untied her <laughs> it was like the same thing they're all like hmm. we'll get him next time <laughs> we'll yeah next time we will yeah because that religious spirit won't won't bend Jesus, we just thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. You know, the thank you. Thank you, Lord. One of the, th the things really quick that the Lord is saying is that the, the purpose and the point, the purpose and the point for the law was to show you that it's impossible for you to do anything without him. Because it was impossible for them to, is it? Because had it been possible, they wouldn't need to slay to slay any animals. There would have to be no sacrifice. The rest was made so that you can rest, just like God rested. He rested, so therefore we're like our Father. That was the whole point to rest. But we get into the whole. I don't need to rest. I don't need to. And it don't have to be on Saturday. He didn't, you know, it doesn't have to be any of that. You just need to find a day to rest and use it to rest and say, Lord, I'm I'm resting this day. Just like you rest. You rested. I'm I'm resting. They didn't have the same schedules like we have and all that where you're bound by work to do certain things. I probably worked every Saturday when I worked, except when I was a teacher. Well, I take that back. Sometimes when I was a teacher, they called us in and we had to anyway. But um, yeah, God wasn't like, oh. <laughs> he's not religious. <laughs> he's not religious. How dare you do this and that? Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for, oh, yes, Lord, I'm just hearing, I'm sorry, I'm just hearing Jesus talking. He said, he said, he didn't, he's, he said, and I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill it. Lord, we just thank you so much. Thank you for fulfilling the law. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for showing us. Lord, would you, I just ask that you would move and have your way in the midst of us, that you would move on every person, Lord, that serpents would flee. Lord, we drive them out by your, by your fire, the fire, 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 God, driving out the enemy. 
Thank you, Jesus. That religious spirit being driven out and 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 prejudices, even though a lot of times we might think we don't have any prejudice. When we think that we're not we don't have any prejudice, I guarantee you that you have prejudice in you. You'd be like, well, pshaw. how is she gonna sit there and say, listen, you do. Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. Period. That's like saying, I don't have any pride in me. Ha! Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. Because what should have came out of your mouth is, Lord, if there's any pride in me. But because you're like, I don't have any pride. That you already have pride. Don't be like, I am not like that person. No, I don't have that. Da, da, da. Look, looky here. Don't get let that mouth get you in trouble. Lord, I repent for any pride. Any pride in me. You just go straight to repentance. Learn to be humble. What true humility is. Lord, we just thank you that every prejudice, every prejudice, every prejudice, I will. Thank you, Jesus. When Taylor came over here the other day, we got to talking about when we were working as bank tellers. Tellers. We didn't work at the same time, but we both had been bank tellers. I, I, I had I probably had just bought any job, but <laughs> there was this, there was this old man that had come up, no one wanted to help him. Um, there was probably, I think, 10, 10 of us. Nobody wanted to help him. When he when it was his turn to come up, everybody just kind of looked the other way, act like they were processing mail or doing something because they were like, nope, not finna help him. Got up to go, oh, I gotta go process my checks. I gotta go do this. Everybody instantly became busy. And I was like, Hi, come on down. He came on down. I was like, how are you doing this morning? And when I said that, I noticed this man was crawling, crawling, crawling with bed bugs all over him. Neck moving across his hair, face all over his clothes. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Just took my hands off the table very slowly. And I continued to smile at him. What can I do for you? And he was like, hi. And he had such an odor that just washed over me. I was like, oh, do you have an ID today? And he's like, yes, I do. Very friendly. He pulled out his wallet and, and handed it to me with it in the wallet, which wasn't uncommon. People did that. You know, they didn't want to take it out or it was hard to take it out of the, the thing. And I'm like, okay. And I just touched it like I normally would. Typed in, you know, his information. And he was like, I just, I, he had like, he wanted to do a couple of things. He had, he needed to do some money orders. He had things that he needed to do, but he had like this box and uh, his little, and I'm like, oh Lord, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And they just moving all over him. But he was, but I just went ahead and just continued to talk to him. I was just prayed, Lord. Let me not take no bed bugs home with me, please, Jesus. And I just talked with him and just made conversation with him. And I got his stuff and the money orders and did everything he needed. And he needed a lot. You know, I wanted to see if this check passed and it did this. He opened up the checkbook and they were within the fold of the checkbook with all just, it was nasty. And he was like, this is the one and I, I'm a hard time seeing. And he's just shaking and trying to show it to me. And he's, you know, and his hands are shaky. They're just like, they're trying to fall out of the checkbook. I'm trying to read. Okay. These numbers will let me look. Let me just look here. Everyone else was like, get him away from me. They knew who he was and I didn't, but even still, it's okay. They had an immediate prejudice. There's no way I would, they don't like, they didn't like helping home people who were homeless or poor or that looked a particular way. And, you know, just finish helping him and you have a good day. He, and he was like, thank you so much and so nice. And and I waited till he was gone out the door and I jumped up from that chair and I ran to the bathroom to check my whole, all my clothes. There was one on me. It was on my skirt and I was like, ah. <laughs> but I was so happy I helped him. Because he needed help. 
they just let him stand there while he's just he's just standing there looking and all lanes are open he's just like I'm like, what is there? No one. Usually you're bored and you want that first person. I'm like, hi, come on up here. I'll help you. Yeah. He, oh, thank you so much. And anytime I saw that man, come on, you just, just come right up here. If you need somebody to help you, just come right to my mind. That's fine. You just come right up here. Because we have to let prejudice die. I know people will be like, well, I don't want, I don't want anything to do with that person. I don't want, I don't, I'm scared to be around them. I'm blah, blah, blah. Well, then we have to get those things in check too. Because if God is with you, you don't have anything to be afraid of. It's okay. When we, when we walked, when we went and delivered the, the, those uh, blessing bags, those fire bags out, you know, we had we had to go into an area where there was a lot of homeless people just huddled together, where it's just where they hung out. Um, and they hung out inside like the 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 bus. Uh, what do you call those? The little bus stops. They hung out in there. There was no there wasn't like a bus that they were taking. They just were all that's just where they hung out. And I don't even know if the, and it was in front of or around this Kroger, because that's where we asked, where, where can we find anybody else who would want these? They said, oh, down, down there by that Kroger. And there was a lot of people right there by that Kroger, just hanging out because they don't have anywhere else to go with carts and backpacks and all of that. You know, they don't expect, they don't want you to be like, you know, here you go. And that. They just want you to, they don't, they don't want, you know, to you to be like condescending. The same thing with the gospel. They just really just need you to just be level with them. And exactly, they don't want your pity. Exactly. They don't want you to be acting all fake. They just want you to level with them and treat them like a person, some dignity. Give them some dignity. So they just need us to love on them. But we got to be willing to do that. But we got we have to get ourselves out of the way to be able to do that too. Hallelujah. Jesus, we just thank you. I thank you, Jesus, for all that you were doing. I surrender everything before you. Total healing. Hallelujah. Fire, the fire God. Fire, fire, fire. Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. You are a good God. Lord, we just shift our eyes to you. We put our eyes on you as our true Savior and our salvation. And we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That you are the God who not only answers by fire, but who answers. We thank you, Lord. And we ask that you would search us. Search us, O Lord. If there be anything in us that is not of you, that you don't want there, we ask that you would take it and remove it. Jesus, we humble ourselves before you, recognizing that we are nothing without you and therefore can do nothing without you. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your deliverance. I thank you, Lord, for freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just repent before you of any prejudice. Yes, Lord, because Jesus, he said he, <laughs> Jesus said he went to the lepers. Yes, he did. Where no one would want to be. No one would want to even touch them for a lot of reasons. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For total deliverance, total healing total restoration. 
and peace. And we thank you, Jesus, that you are bringing us out of everything that doesn't glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. You know, the Lord said, like Cindy McGill, she's hugging these women who are, you know, prostitutes and 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 they or they work in the porn industry and all that. She's hugging them and you know and 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 holding them like like they're her daughters. You know, most people be like, I don't want to touch that person. We just have to. We have to empty ourselves of ourselves and become more like him and less like us. Because our who we are is selfish. No matter what, however we spend it, we're selfish. We are. And if we try to convince ourselves that we're not, then we're liars too. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for total, total healing and restoration and peace. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. But I also just thank you for freedom. Freedom and peace for each person, Lord, with that with that have suffered with ringing in the ears. I drive that spirit out. You are coming out. You are coming out. I drive that out. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for freedom, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for freedom. And for, and that, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hallelujah. That, that is Karen here. Yeah, Karen, that, that pressure, that squeezing that you feel in your arm, is it there right now? Shut it up. That squeezing is a, is a, uh, snakes that constrict like that. It's that that python spirit that we talked about once before so any you you're um whenever you do experience that again just take note uh of what is happening is there because the that spirit of python deals with witchcraft um is there is there any manipulation or you know any type of witchcraft being played in the house movies and etc that's allowing this to come into your home. Um, so Lord, we just thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for saying that. Cause I forgot all about that. Thank you for saying that Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Right. Someone bring right. Not her in particular. Cause she, she's not watching that, you know, uh, or, or doing any of that. It's, Anyone in the home exactly? Shut it up, Yanda. Sadara, Basiti, Yanda. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. His presence is so strong right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. When his presence shows up, he's come to heal. He's come to set free. He's coming. That's when he, first of all, he's here anyway, because we are gathered in his name. He is here. Hallelujah. But when his presence begins to move, Lord, we just thank you for healing, for administering healing, for, for touching your people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for total healing. Thank you, Jesus, for freedom. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Filling, yes, he's filling up, filling up our cups, filling up our cups, our vessels, who we are filling us up with him. Hallelujah, Jesus, yes, we just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You are so good. <clears throat> Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I hear the Father just decreeing a time of peace, a time of restoration, a time of declaration. Hallelujah. Look that up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said a time of sol solidarity, which means unity or agreement of feeling or action, especially among individuals with a common interest, a mutual support within a group. Hallelujah. Jesus, we just thank you. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing such a praise report. Hallelujah. She said her husband used to watch movies that were scary, but she's asked him not to watch them anymore. And he's realized over the last couple of months that they're not of God. And he, he and his sister have experienced nightmares all of their lives. Uh, he hasn't complained about them in a while, but he says when he doesn't experience them, he feels odd because it's been for so long that he's always experienced nightmares. Um, and she said he hasn't woke up in the middle of the night from them in at least a month now, though. So I think that has lessened. I've been praying over him a lot and haven't and haven't wanted to bring it up to him or remind him about them. Hallelujah. That's right. Just, just, just let let it fall away until the Lord, until the Lord has you say something. You just hold your peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yep. A television, television, right? What you watch influences your life. Absolutely. And gets inside you, goes in you. Hallelujah. And it goes into the atmosphere of your home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No different if someone did a seance in my living room. It, rather I was there to watch it or not, someone did a seance in my living room. You see what I'm saying? That's why I don't even let stuff just play. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
doesn't matter. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't in, in agreement with it. You still let it happen. What are you talking about? Why well, didn't know about it? It's even worse. <laughs> it's even worse because you should know what's going on in your home. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I made them leave. Okay. Well, they might've walked out or you turned the TV off, but did you drive those spirits out? Hallelujah. No, you guys can't eat that. <laughs> She's trying to ask me for more cinnamon rolls. Hallelujah. Yes. Because if it's here, then you're in agreement with it. And just understand that's what agreements mean. If someone came to my door and said, you know, and just was like, had let's say they were they, they just were murderer you know or 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 somebody kind of evil and they just come to the door i open the door and they're like can i come in but i don't say anything but they come in but i don't stop them then that's an agreement well i didn't say anything well it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter you didn't try to stop them you didn't say no it'd be different if you said no well i was scared trust me i've been in that situation where you're scared and you don't say anything hallelujah <laughs> But fear not, for the Lord God is with you. You don't have to be afraid. Yeah, entertainment. Yeah, it enters you while it detains you. Exactly, in entertainment. You, while you are detained, it, something is entering you. Exactly. Hallelujah. Jesus, we just thank you. Thank you for freedom. Thank you, Lord, for truth. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Lord, we just give you honor and praise and glory. To you be the, the glory and the honor and praise forever. Let us always exalt your name. Let us always exalt your name. Hallelujah. Let us always sing your praises and increase your fame. And tell every person about you as the Lord wills it. You know, you can tell about the Lord without even saying anything about him because you are a living epistle read of men. Hallelujah. Bible talks about it often. Talks about how, how, how to expose the deeds of darkness by living your life in complete and total contrast of it. It didn't say go and preach the gospel to that person. It didn't say anything like that. You let God lead you. But don't be confused or let the enemy make you feel guilty because you didn't go evangelize a person. So therefore, you're not really saved. He's a liar. He's a liar. You don't know if the Lord just said, smile at that person. If that was everything that they needed. Because how about they said, Lord, if you're real, then some stranger will smile at me. You don't know people's prayers. And then the Lord says, smile right now. Smile at that person. You look at a person, you smile at them. And they're like, oh. And it had been the answer that, to the prayer because maybe no one ever smiled at them because the devil wanted to make sure they felt rejected. You don't know, but you don't always need to know. You just need to just be obedient and watch him work it out. Hallelujah. You're going to receive rewards in heaven you knew nothing about just because you were obedient. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you again. We love you. We love you so much. We thank you. We can never thank you enough. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah and amen and amen. Uh, so shalom, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. I will see most of you back on Thursday and Friday. So praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Remember to continue to be obedient to the Lord. And He let him lead you. And tell that lying devil to just shut up and go back to hell where he came from. Hallelujah. Amen, everybody. Goodbye.